So brothers and sisters, welcome to Divine Jubilee Bible Study Part 3. In Part 1, we looked at the introduction. In Part 2, we looked at the law of Jubilee in the Old Testament and the provisions thereof, the law of Jubilee in the Old Testament and the provisions thereof. We established that the law was a tutor till the, the real seed, yes, till the fulfillment has come, which is Christ Jesus himself, hallelujah. And since Christ has come, now Christ is much more than what the law of Jubilee provided, but it does gives us the understanding of what we are to enjoy in this divine Jubilee today. Glory be to God. So today we want to look at the provision of God in this divine Jubilee. Our text remains Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, and we will come to that. Let's start by just again reminding ourselves of the law of Jubilee in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 9 and 10. Leviticus chapter 25, verses 9 and 10. Let's read it together. Then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land. 10. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family. And if you read from verse 1, all the way to verse 55 of this Leviticus chapter 25, you see the full provision under the law of Jubilee. One key point to note here is that the trumpet of Jubilee proclaimed, it was the trumpet of Jubilee that proclaimed it is the year of Jubilee. So in the same manner, let us see what the Father God Almighty has proclaimed concerning his son, our divine Jubilee. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew quickly. Matthew chapter 3. 16 and 17, Matthew 3, 16 and 17. If you read there, you will see after Jesus was baptized, as he came out, the Holy Spirit came upon him and God himself declared, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In Matthew chapter 17, Matthew chapter 17, let's read verses one to five, Matthew 17. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, too, and he was transfigured, hallelujah, before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. He was transfigured, hallelujah. Three, and behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them. Moses and Elijah. Moses that we have been reading in Leviticus chapter 25. Who, because if you go to Leviticus chapter 25 and you look at verse 1, what we're talking about, the law of Jubilee, God spoke to Moses and said to him, in verse 1, he said, And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. So that Moses, hallelujah, is what we are talking about here. And behold, verse 3, John, uh, Matthew chapter 17, And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. 
So the disciples saw Moses and Elijah. They appeared and they were talking with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Four, then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Five, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him, listen to him. And so we're saying the trumpet announced, this is the year of Jubilee. What has the father, God Almighty himself announced, proclaimed concerning his son. God proclaimed concerning Jesus, the divine Jubilee, the spiritual Jubilee that we have come into. He said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him, hear him. Whatever he says, hear him. If you look at Acts chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, you will hear Moses also had earlier announces to the children of Israel. He said to them, the Lord your God will raise up a prophet like myself to you. He said him, you shall listen to and whatever he says, Acts chapter Three, if we look at verses 22 and 23, it says, For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. What has the father announced concerning, proclaimed concerning his son Jesus Christ, our divine jubilee? He said, whatever he says, whatever he, Jesus, says, the same that Moses had uh, prophesied to the children of Israel, whatever he says, listen to him. That's why we spent time studying the synoptic gospel. So you hear what Jesus has said, because he's the one who heard directly from the Father and has spoken to us. So Moses said him, you shall hear in all things whatever he says to you. Verse 23, he said, and it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, 24, all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow as many as have spoken have also foretold these days, these days, that this is the day of that divine jubilee. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So in the law of jubilee in the Old Testament, we saw what the provision of that jubilee. We'll go back to just look at it. Now, God said, Whatever his son Jesus Christ says, we should hear, we should listen, we should do what he says. We'll just look at a few things that Jesus has said, that God has provided for us in this divine jubilee. And it is our portion to enjoy it. Hallelujah. If the people of old enjoyed the pro Proclamation of the law of Jubilee. Once the trumpet was sounded in the year of Jubilee, every oppression ceases, every enslavement comes to an end, and the unlimited favor of God, the abundance of God, oh, was poured upon his people. Everyone within the land, the territory of the children of Israel all over the land enjoyed the provisions of Jubilee. In Christ Jesus, the same. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, we know the Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
And so what Jesus has done in the synoptic gospels, he is able to do them today and he will do it forever. As long as the earth remains, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory be to God. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. And so let's quickly just remind ourselves of the provisions of the law of Jubilee that we look at. We looked at eight key headlines, eight key headlines that we looked at. We'll just uh, again remind ourselves. And then we'll come back and see much more than um, what is provided in the law of Jubilee that Jesus Christ has provided much more for us. Glory be to God. So we looked at God's provisions under the law of Jubilee, and today we want to look at God's provisions under Christ Jesus for us and pray according to God's provision because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. He never changes. I say he never changes. He's the same. He's the same. Glory be to God. God's provision. So we saw number one, atonement and forgiveness, freedom and liberty, restoration, that is possession, uh, our restoration of our possession and uh, of family, uh, restoring us to our possessions and to our family. Righteousness in all dealings, righteousness in the land. Number five, increase. It was a season of God's abundance and unlimited favors. So sustenance, God's sustenance. It was a season of safety, protection. It was the law, the law brought redemption and release, release unconditionally, whatever debts one was uh, uh, owed, whatever uh, um, enslavement that was upon anybody, whether a person, uh, because of he was poor, sold himself into slavery or gave his land to, uh, uh, gave his land, you know, uh, and he couldn't redeem it when the day of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee comes unconditionally, that slave must be free. Unconditionally, that land must be redeemed. Redemption and release, unconditional redemption and release. So shall it be to you today. Is there anything enslaving your life unconditionally in Christ Jesus? You have been released and you have been redeemed. And so that redemption must take effect now. It must be enforced in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. And it was a time of rejoicing, a time of joy, a time of celebration. Oh, in Christ Jesus. We celebrate our freedom, our liberty. We celebrate the salvation that God Almighty has given to us. We celebrate God's unlimited favor. These were the eight headlines that we looked at. Now let's go back and look at uh, the provision, of, of course, much more in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll look at our texts, which is Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. And also this is the fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 uh, through 3. Let's look at the scripture, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And we'll look at a number of scriptures. Remember the context is, what has God Proclaim concerning his son. If the trumpet announced the law of Jubilee as God has provided, and it took effect much more 
what God has said concerning his son will take effect in our lives. And we have seen that God said, listen to him, whatever he says. So we'll start from Luke chapter 4. Let's read from verse uh, 18. We'll read a bit more. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Uh, if I let's step a bit backward uh, to uh, read from, from verse 14. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. 16. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read, 17. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. So he opened and read Isaiah chapter 61 that I just told us. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Continue reading with me from 20. Then he closed the book. And gave it back to them, to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today, everybody say today, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Hallelujah. So he announced, today, divine jubilee has come to you. Today, divine jubilee has come to all. Hallelujah. Because as you can see from that verse 18 to verse 19, the same proclamation that was made in the law of jubilee have been proclaimed here and much more. Hallelujah. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news. The good news to the poor. To preach the good news to the needy. To preach the good news to all humankind. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. That was not in the law of Jubilee. Because everything that was physical. But here the master. The Lord of Sabbath himself has come. And he proclaimed, as the father said, listen to him, whatever he says, whatever Jesus says, listen to him. He proclaimed. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing that the spirit of the Lord has anointed him, Jesus, to heal the brokenhearted, to declare, announce, proclaim, and set the captive free, to proclaim liberty to the captives, whether it is captivity of sin, whether it is captivity of the devil, of demons, Whatever captivity there may be to set the captive free. And recovery of sight to the blind, whether it is physical blindness or it is spiritual blindness, but there are many who seeing, they will see with their physical eyes and yet they will not see. The real thing. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Jesus said he has come to give sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Oppression. 
whether it is the physical oppression of man or the spiritual oppression of the devil to set the oppressed free. The same declaration that was made in the law of Jubilee in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ is our divine Jubilee, our spiritual Jubilee. Verse 19, he said to proclaim the acceptable year of the law. And as we have seen in ampli amplified version or NIV, it says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day, the time, the season of God's unlimited favor. Verse 20, then Jesus closed the book and gave it back to the attendant. And he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And I announce to you that today, this scripture is fulfilled to your hearing. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so Jesus immediately went on to demonstrate the fulfillment of this jubilee announcement, this spiritual jubilee, this divine jubilee. Oh, glory be to God. That the captive, he has come to set free. That the oppressed, he has come to set free. That the sick, he has come to heal. The brokenhearted, he has come to heal. The blind, he has come to give sight to. Whatever may be the circumstance and the situation of humankind, Jesus is the solution. He has come to give us the solution. Because that's what the law of Jubilee was meant. It was a symbol for the divine Jubilee, the true Jubilee. The real jubilee, that is Jesus Christ, who would come. And Moses said, he, you should listen to. Whatever he says. And so Jesus, having announced the fulfillment of God's prophecy concerning him, went on immediately to demonstrate the fulfillment. And so let's look at just a few examples, just a few examples, a few examples. If we look at Mark chapter 1, 38 to 42, Mark 1, 38 to 42. And then we'll just continue into Mark chapter 2, Mark 1, 38 to 42, Mark 1. Let's look at it together. He said, but he said to them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also because for this purpose I have come forth. Did you hear that? He, just what he declared in Luke chapter four. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news. The good news. And here in Mark chapter one, 38, he says, for this purpose, I have come forth to tell the people of God, the acceptable year of the Lord has come to all humankind. 39, he said, and he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons, setting the oppressed free, oppressed of demons set free, setting the captive free, casting out demons, 40. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 41, then Jesus moved with compassion, struck out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Brothers and sisters, I want to announce to you that
Jesus is always willing. I said, Jesus is always willing. Jesus Christ never said no to anybody. Go and check. In the entire Bible, throughout the time Jesus was here on earth, he never said no to anybody who came to him, whether for healing, whether for deliverance, even the ones who were in need, he never said no to anybody. He, all, he is always willing. So I want to announce to you that he is willing right now to touch your own life. He is willing to do the same in your own life. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. He will never change. Not in your own situation. Not in my own situation. Not in our own circumstance. He is the same. And so the leper came to him and said, if you are willing, you can cleanse me. And Jesus said, I am willing. Oh, is there somebody who is saying, Jesus, if you can just touch me, if you are willing, you can heal me. And Jesus is saying, I am willing to heal you. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still in the business of healing today, in the business of casting out demons, in the business of setting the oppressed free today. He has not changed. And he has not ceased from doing this good. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. To set the captives free. Hallelujah. To proclaim the year, the day, the moment, the time, the season of God's favor to all. If you are willing, and Jesus said, I am willing. Jesus is saying to you right now, I am the divine jubilee and I am willing. I am willing. I am willing. I say Jesus is willing. Look at verse 41 with me. Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Jesus, then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. 43. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once and said to him, See, that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them because they were still under the law of Moses. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but was outside in deserted places, and they came to him from every direction. It is those who come to him that enter into this jubilee. And if you have come to him, he is saying, I am willing. I am willing. Jesus is willing. Look at uh, chapter 2, Mark chapter 2. We continue. Mark chapter 2. Glory be to God. We'll read a number of verses. Mark chapter 2, and again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Five, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. He forgives sin. He is always willing. Nobody comes to Jesus 
and he sends away. In fact, Jesus Christ himself announced, he said, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. This man, because of his sin, became paralyzed. He became a paralytic. When Jesus saw, he knew the source of his problem, that it was sin, and he forgave his sin. So there is nothing that can keep you from enjoying this jubilee. Because Jesus has the power to forgive sin. He announced, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So Jesus said to the, to, said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. I'll just jump straight to verse 11. He followed up. Say, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. 12, immediately he arose, took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all so that all were amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. I speak forth to your life that this will be the testimony that people will say concerning you, what Jesus has done for you. We have never seen anything like this. Oh, but are you ready? Are you ready to receive that testimony, that miracle, that ministration of Jesus Christ? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God announced concerning his son. He said, whatever he says to you, hear him. Moses said the same. This prophet that will come, whatever he says, you must hear him. You must do what he says. And Jesus came and said in Luke chapter 4, which is our anchor verse, uh, chapter rather, 4, 18 and 19, he says, I am the divine jubilee. Jubilee means liberty, freedom, and liberty. It means the year, the time, the season of the Lord's favor, unlimited favor. It is a time for the oppressed to be set free, both spiritual oppression and physical oppression, all forms of oppression. To cease is a time of atonement for your sins, not only to be atoned, but to be forgiven and for you to be sanctified, if only you will come to him, Jesus. So here, the paralytic who became afflicted because of his sin, Jesus forgave him his sins and then commanded him, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And so it was, so much so that people said, we have never seen it in this manner. In Matthew chapter 14, 13 and 20 to 21, you know that Jesus again demonstrated that all that took place in the law of Jubilee he is much more than that. In the law of Jubilee, God announced that the sixth year produce will be more than, it will be enough to carry the people for three years. He, that God, God said, I will command my blessing upon you, upon your harvest in the sixth year. And it will be much more than whatever you have done before. Matthew chapter 14, if we start from verse 13, you remember what happened there? Just to remind us, Matthew chapter 14, when Jesus heard, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. 
And Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Hallelujah. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking into and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The power of sustenance is in Christ, the divine jubilee. Beloved brothers and sisters, everything that was provided for in the law of jubilee, Jesus Christ demonstrated that he is the divine jubilee and that he is much more than all that. What is your need today? What is your need today? Jesus is the bread of life, the bread that a man should eat and not be hungry anymore. Look at John chapter 6 with me, verse 48. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. John chapter 5. You can read all the way from verse 2 to 9. But I just look at uh, verse seven, uh, verse seven to nine. You remember this is uh, again the paralytic, the paralytic that the angel will come to stir the water, and anyone who can step in will be healed. And you see, God was giving all this as a sign to prepare the people for what the divine jubilee will bring to them. Hallelujah. So if we start reading. From verse 7, the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Hey, Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Nine, and immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath day. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus, the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he has done, as recorded in the Synoptic Gospels that I have just read to us, what he has done, as recorded in the book of Acts, the same he is doing today. The same he will continue to do as long as the earth remains. Raise your voice down to heaven and tell him and say, Lord Jesus, shout with me. Lord Jesus, you are the divine jubilee. You are my jubilee. I believe all that the Father has proclaimed concerning you. And all that you have proclaimed and demonstrated concerning yourself. You are the divine jubilee. You are my jubilee. You are my freedom. You are my liberty. You have set me free from every oppression and every captivity. By your blood, you have cleansed me, washed me. And right now, Jesus, I surrender to you. Oh, let that blood wash me, cleanse me. Porch me. You are willing. Porch me. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. We're just going to take three parts prayer now. Wash me. Cleanse me, Jesus. My divine jubilee, wash me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Cleanse me. 
from every sin, from every iniquity, every transgression, every error, every mistake, wash me, cleanse me, cleanse me. Oh, like you said to the paralytic in that Mark chapter 2, he says, son, your sins are forgiven you. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me with your precious blood. Sanctify me, sanctify me with your precious blood. Sanctify me with your word. Your word is truth. Sanctify me with your Holy Spirit, almighty God. Sanctify me in the name of Jesus. I repent of every sin. I reject and I renounce sin. I reject and I renounce the devil and every evil work. I give my life to you, almighty God. I give my heart to you, almighty God. Lord Jesus, the one whose name is Emmanuel, God with us, come and dwell in my heart. Come and dwell in my body, in my soul, in my spirit. I yield myself to you. Take over my life now. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, prayer point number two. Go ahead now and declare your freedom in whatever captivity, if it is sickness that, has, that, you, that, 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 that is the captivity in your life, the oppression in your life, whatever captivity, whatever oppression, go ahead now and tell him, Lord Jesus, my divine jubilee, I thank you for you have set me free from the captivity of sickness infirmity and disease. And now Lord Jesus, heal my body, heal my body and mention whatever it is, heal my body. And whatever oppression there is in your life, tell Jesus, take this oppression away. And now you declare it by the divine jubilee in Christ Jesus, you sickness go from my body. Go from my body. Go ahead and announce it so. It must hear and must go. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and announce it so. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You have heard all that the provision of the law of Jubilee carried, contained, and Jesus Christ, the divine Jubilee, has demonstrated to us that he is much more God has put all the blessings in him and through him. We have all the blessings of God for our lives, much more than what was provided for the Jews, for the children of Israel every 50 years. We have it now in Christ Jesus. So go ahead and pray and pray in two parts. Lord Jesus, Thank you for you are my divine jubilee and you have set me free from all forms of oppression. Every captivity, you have set me free. And now you are announced to that captivity, that oppression, whatever it is. Sickness by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I was healed. I am healed now and I remain healed forever. And so now, Get out of my life. You oppression cease. Announce that oppression and tell that oppression cease in the name of Jesus. You cease today. I declare my jubilee in Christ Jesus. It is my day of jubilee in Christ Jesus. I'm free. I am free. There shall be no more oppression. There shall be no more captivity. Go ahead and announce it and announce it and declare it and proclaim it unto yourself. It is your day. It is your year. It is your time. It is your season. It is your moment of freedom, of liberty. Declare your freedom. Declare your liberty in the name of Jesus. Now the third part, the third part is the divine sustenance. Oh, you saw there in Matthew chapter 14 with two fishes and five loaves, he fed 5,000 men, not to uh, mention women and children. Raise your voice again to him and say, Lord Jesus, 
You are my divine jubilee. You are my divine jubilee. You are my sustenance. And now sustain me, all my needs, all my needs, as it is written. My God shall provide all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. You are my sustainability. You are my sustenance. Provide all my needs. Now go ahead and tell him about those needs. He is meeting all needs, all needs, whatever needs there may be. He is meeting all needs. Be very specific and clear. God is meeting all your needs through Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, he's able to sustain you. He is able to sustain me. He is able to sustain us. Go ahead and tell him, Lord Jesus, my divine jubilee, you are my sustenance. You have demonstrated it with two fishes and five loaves. You fed 5,000. You are able to enlarge me. You are able to increase me and multiply me. You are able to make me what God has created me to be. So now I ask, Heavenly Father, in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus, sustain me, enlarge me, increase, O oh God Almighty, increase me, increase me, increase my business, my career, my ministry, enlarge me in Christ Jesus. You are my jubilee. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty King. Blessed be your name. Glory be to you, O God. Let's bring our prayer to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And now take one minute and pray for yourself. Pray. Pray for yourself. I told us today will be a day of ministration. Pray for yourself. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Jesus is willing. He is willing. The leper said, if you are willing, you are able to cleanse me. And Jesus said, I am willing, be cleansed. Hallelujah. Jesus said, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. He that comes to me, I will in no wise, no wise cast out. Whoever comes to me, I will not cast him away. Go ahead and ask your father in the name of Jesus. Whatever you ask today, believe him. The divine jubilee. God has made a provision for you, for me, for us. Provision of freedom, of liberty. Provision to terminate every oppression and every form of enslavement. Provision for divine sustenance, to sustain us and help us. Provision of God's unlimited favors. So go ahead and ask. Thank you, our Father and our God. Blessed be your name, O God. Want to bring a prayer to a close now, as we agree. Yes, whatever Jesus says, that's the principle. He says, do so. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. You are very, you conversing with the word. Jesus said here, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Oh, I had cause to minister to a brother um, yesterday, uh, yes, just yesterday, and I brought him to this scripture after we have spoken a number of things and prayed. And I said to him, you see, Jesus, he's awesome. Jesus here taught us something so profound. 
He provided for us here such that when we follow what he has said, nothing can stop the answer. You cannot stop the answer. I cannot stop the answer. No power can stop the answer. He takes it out of anybody's control. For he said, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. And the Father loves us, and the Father loves his Son, Jesus Christ. And the Father just has to do it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Are you ready? Let us pray in agreement. Your agreement is to say amen when I say in Jesus' name. As we round off now for the jubilee of God in Christ Jesus must manifest in your life, must manifest in my life. Jubilee is our celebration of freedom and liberty. Jubilee is our celebration of salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God's salvation has come to you, come to me, come to mankind. Jubilee is our celebration of God's unlimited favors. Whatever you have asked, I agree with you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive your healing, receive your deliverance, receive that miracle, receive that breakthrough, receive that restoration, receive in the name of Jesus. I agree with you that the almighty God will perform all the blessings and the provisions of the divine jubilee as Jesus Christ has announced to us in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, to heal the brokenhearted, to heal the sick, to open the blind eyes, spiritual blindness, physical blindness, to set at liberty those who are in prison, in any form of prison, whatever prison, wherever your star, your destiny has been locked up by the divine jubilee, receive your freedom and be released now in the name of Jesus to set at liberty those who were oppressed and to proclaim the year, the day, the time, the season of God's unlimited favors upon you, upon me, upon us, by the Spirit of God that quickens. But quicken now by the Spirit of God and begin to shine, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. I agree with you that God's divine jubilee manifests in your life, in my life, in our lives, in our families, in all that we do now and forevermore. Today, this week, this month, this year, and all the days, of your life, of my life, of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have agreed. Amen. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.